In this problem, we have a T-beam formed by the long bar A, B, C, D, which is horizontal, and a short vertical bar E, C, supporting two forces, P and P. In addition, we need to take into account the weight of the beam and the forces P as such that they're equal to the total weight of the beam. Our task is to construct the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the segment ABCD and determine the maximum bending moment within this segment. In solving this problem, it is important to isolate the straight part and it is also critically important to address the hinge at B. To this end, I will split the beam into three parts. The first part is between A and B. Since at A have a wall, I show two forces and a couple. At B I have a hinge and therefore there is no couple involved. I show the force P equal to W as part of this segment. So in effect, I'm claiming that the force P applied a little bit to the left of P. Finally, I show the distributed force Q. This force is associated with one quarter of the weight because the total length of the bar is 4, 8. The distributed load is W over 4 divided by A, because the force is distributed per length A. Next, I will show the free body diagram for EC. Here I show two prescribed forces W and W over 4, and three forces imposed by the constraint of the horizontal bar. I could have shown this W4 as a distributed load, but it would not affect our equilibrium equations. Finally, I will draw the free body diagram for the segment BCD. And here I inherit the forces BX and BY from the left free body diagram. I inherit the moment and forces at C, and of course, all of the choices are dictated by Newton's third law. And finally, I have the reaction at the roller D. And again, I have a distributed load Q with the magnitude W over 4A. Now, I need to identify all of the known forces, and they're all shown in blue. And the way I'll proceed, I'll start with this. Free body diagrams, because it has three equations, three unknowns. Once I determine the forces at C and the couple at C, I can proceed to this free body diagram and use the three equilibrium equations to determine the unknowns bx, by, and dy. And finally, I can take bx and by and determine the remaining three unknowns by analyzing the left free body diagram. Here we are. The first free body diagram, sum of the forces along x, sum of the forces along y, some of the moments about C and the resulting answers are given here for the forces and couple at C. Next, I proceed to the free body diagram for the segment BCD. So now the forces and the couple at C appear in red because they have been determined. And uh, we write down equilibrium equations for the forces shown in blue. First, we write it 
using the distributed load and then I simply replace Q with W over 4A so that my equilibrium equations are now written in terms of W rather than Q and this gives me the answers for the forces at BX, BY and DY. Finally, I look at the segment AB and now I can calculate the reaction forces at A and the couple at A and this allows me to draw the free body diagrams for the horizontal segments AB and BCD. I want to pay your attention that here we have not only shear forces and bending moments, but we also have axial forces. In particular, the segment AB is in tension, and this tension could be traced back to the horizontal applies force P. Now, for calculating the shear forces and bending moment diagrams, the axial forces or the horizontal forces in this case do not have to be taken into account and therefore I will only focus on the vertical forces and couples. Also, I would like to pay your attention that the force P here is split between the two segments and this split is not arbitrary it is dictated by equilibrium equations. And of course, 7 over 8 W plus 1 8 W is equal to W. Now I can take these two segments, put them together, and draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. At this stage, I draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams by simply going from left to right and using differential relationships. So I start the shear force from 9 over AW. Then I move with the slope equal to minus Q over length A. So the total drop is minus QA or it is minus W over 4, or the loss is 2W over 8, and therefore I arrive at this point. Now I show the jump downwards associated with the force W. Please pay attention, I'm getting the 7 eighths and 1 eighths discussed on the previous slide. I continue with the same slope because Q stays fixed. I have another downward jump by W over 4 or 2 W over 8. Continue with the same slope and I arrive at a negative force minus 7 over 8 W which is of course consistent with the force Q. For the bending moment diagram, I start with a negative couple minus WA. And then I know that at this point, I must get zero. And the way the zero obtained is I have a parabola. The parabola is such that the loss or the gain, sorry, is greater at this part because the force is larger here and there are no critical points because the derivative of m which is v is nowhere equal to zero along this segment then i start with zero and now the bending moment diagram goes from zero to a negative value because its slope here is negative again the absolute value of the slope is larger at this end simply because the magnitude of the shear force is larger at this end. Then from minus 
1 over 4 wa i jump by wa i obtain this point and then i arrive here okay the value of minus 1 over 4 wa could be obtained by either cutting here or alternatively we start here from zero we arrive to this point the value of this point must be equal to the integral over the shear force or simply the area of this trapezoid and you should be able to convince yourself that this is indeed the area of the trapezoid next let me go through a more detailed construction that involves cuts my first cut will be for x between a and b or for x that is less than lowercase a and i will be thinking about a cut within the segment a b and this cut generates the following free body diagram in this free body diagram we have two unknowns v and m we can write down two equations and solve these equations for the shear force and bending moment functions next i make a cut for x between b and c in this case i will look at the segment bcd total segment and i'll be cutting uh, within the segment so that the length from b to the cut is x minus 8. once the cut is introduced the free body diagram for v of x and m of x looks like this the corresponding equilibrium equations give me the shear force and bending moment equations finally i make a cut somewhere between c and d i'm looking now at the segment b d but i would like to look at the cut from the right so that the segment that I consider has the length 3a minus x so it is this segment for this segment the equilibrium equations are given here and the equations for v of x and m of x follow immediately now we can combine the equations obtained on the three previous slides and just simply plot the functions and here i show exactly the same shear force and bending moment diagrams as was shown some time ago and uh, here on the left i show the equations for the segment a b on the right i show the equations for the segment c d and in between i show the equations for the segment b c of course these are the same diagrams right of course the maximum absolute value of the bending moment is w a and it is at the wall. Thank you.